Hello everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel, Homeopathy Super Sessions by Dr. Jagos. Today we are do, doing the part 3 in which I will describe to you the life and contributions of the great Dr. Constantine Herring. Well, Dr. Constantine Herring was known as the father of homeopathy in America, which you all know. He was also known as the Honeyman of USA. He was born on the 1st January at the midnight in the year 1800 at Ostjat in Saxony. His father, Karl, Karl Goblet Gottlob Herring, was an organist in, in Ostjat and played the organ in church. At the age of 17, he became interested in medicine and joined the University of Leipzig. Here he became the favorite pupil of Dr. Henry Straubai, an eminent surgeon. And Dr. Robai was a critic and, like other physicians, used to ridicule and criticize homeopathy and anemia. Dr. Herring passed his qualification examination, his, his qualifying examination from the medic of, for medicine from Dresden in 1817 from Würzburg University with highest honors. His theme of the thesis was the Medicina Futura, that is the medicine, the medicine of the future. Now the conversion to homeopathy. In 1821, when the campaign against Hanneman was at its worst, Seam ba Baumgartner the founder of a publishing house in Leipzig wanted to publish a books against homeopathy to condemn the system. Dr. Robai was asked to write it, but declined for want of time and recommended Herring his young assistant. Herring was very pleased and nearly finished the work in the winter of 1822. While going through the writer Hanneman, he came across a famous nota bene for my reviewers in the preface of the third volume of Matra Medica Pura. It said, the doctrine appeals not only chiefly, but solely to the verdict of experience. Repeat the experiments, it cries aloud. Repeat them carefully and accurately, and you will find the doctrine confirmed at every step, and it does what no medicine doctrine, no system of physics, the no-so-called the no so therapeutics ever did or could do. It insists upon being judged by results. So Herring decided to confirm the truth of this. Remarks. So this is a very important nota bene, which ch changed Dr. Constantine's hearing life completely towards homeopathy. He repeated the Simcoe experiment and Hanneman's result was confirmed. Furthermore, further study of homeopathy matter medica and experience convinced him about Hanneman's ideas, thus the book against homeopathy thus never saw the light of the day. In 1824, an incident occurred which he had the effect of an unshakable fate in homeopathy on Herring. So this was the second incident, incident which occurred, which was much more of a great impact as compared to the first nota bene. The finger of his right hand was accidentally cut by dissecting a dead body. The wound rapidly became gangrenous. The routine orthodox medical treatment did not help him. Thus, Kumar, a disciple of Hanneman, proceeded him to take homeopathic treatment. So while dissecting, the dead body, his, 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 his finger, the right hand was cut and the orthodox treatment could not give him relief or could not give much help. So one of the disciples of Dr. Hanneman, Kuma, he insisted that he that Dr. Herring take the homeopathic treatment. So Kuma gave him arsenic album. After a few days, he felt better and the gangrene was completely cured. Herring was surprised and became pretty interested in homeopathy. So this was another very great incident which occurred in, in Herring's life, which gave him an unshakable fate in homeopathy. He discarded the Leipzig degree and then migrated from North America to South America and back to Germany. He finally settled in North America and started a college there. In January 1833, Herring established a homeopathy school in Allentown, Pennsylvania, commonly known as the Allentown Academy of Homeopathy. Soon he became a very popular as a physician there. Now, contributions. The credit of popular homeopathy in USA goes to Herring. He was responsible for the first homeopathy college outside Europe, Allentown, 30 kilometers from Philadelphia Academy of Homeopathy in Pennsylvania. Unfortunately, the college was forced to close down due to financial mismanagement by the secretary. He became the member of the Academy of Natural Sciences and contributed to its valuable zoological collection. One such contribution included the original Lacus trigonocephalus of South America, the snake with whose poison he had performed the first proving of Lacus. So his greatest contribution to homeopathy is the proving of Lacus. 
He was the chief editor of the North American Homeopathy Journal from 1851 to 1853, the Homeopathy News from 1854 to 1856, the American College of Journal of Homeopathy Metromedica from 1867 to 1871, and also the journal from his own college. In the sphere of drug proving, he proved like his great depth. This proving had the intimate effect on him, making his thought very sensitive, and throughout his life, he could not bear a necktie. So if you've seen all the photographs of Dr. Herring, you would see he is without any tie or his collar is open because it proved he had proved lacrosses to a great extent so that his neck became very sensitive and he could not wear a necktie. He also proved seventy two drugs, the most important ones being colchicum, cantharis, iodum, mesarium, sabadella, sabina, sorinum, lacrosis, crotalis, apis, nuts, moschata, phytolaca, patina, glonine, gelsemium, calmia, pyramid, fluoric acid, acid phos, etc. So you must remember Dr. Herring proved 700 drugs in a lifetime. Dr. Henneman proved 99 drugs. And remember at least two, three names of the drugs, whatever you can remember. He enunciated the law of direction of cure, popularly known as Herring's law. It states that the cure takes place from above downwards, from within outwards, from organs of more importance to organs of less importance, that is from periphery, to, from center to periphery, and the symptoms appear, and the symptoms should disappear, and the reverse of the appearance, that is the first to appear, is the last to disappear. In 1853, another famous book was The Domestic Physician, or The Homeopathic Domestic Physician. It was very popular with the general practitioners and had 50 editions. In 1867, he wrote Comparative Materia Medica, 1873 Materia Medica, 1875 Ana Analytical Therapeutics. 1877, Dr. Herring condensed the monumental work of his guided symptom Materia Medica into a single book called Condensed Materia Medica. 1880, Herring's guided symptom, which is a monumental work of 10 volumes consisting of 5,721 pages. In 1881, Analytical Repertory of Mind, he also wrote a small booklet called Model Cases. Now, death. Dr. Herring died on 23rd of July, 1880, at 10 p.m. due to angina pectoris. The chest pain was sudden and unexpected. When he went to study room to resume his acting, the fourth one was guiding symptoms. The attack made his hands and wrists cold throughout. His, uh, this attack made his hands and wrists cold, though he was perfectly conscious. He was restless and moved from side to side on his couch, suffering from dyspnea. Herring's last words, I am dying now, were to Mrs. Martins, a family friend. The funeral was held in the morning of 20th July, 1880. He was, less to, he was late to rest at the Laurel Hill Cemetery. On 10 October, 1880, a memorial meeting of member physicians was held in Philadelphia. People wrote about him, referring to him as an inexhaustible workhouse of empathy and apostle of the new system of medicine. So again, that's all for Dr. Herring's contribution, his birth, his death, you must know, his contributions, his conversion to homeopathy, which medicine was given to cure the gangrene, and important contribution, and how he died and what he died. So for, for basically for all pioneers, you must, you must know all this. Thank you so much.